And welcome back. The federal government met the very high threshold, threshold rather, to invoke the Emergencies Act, not without Justice Rulo saying the so-called Freedom Convoy never should have escalated to that point. So what is the political fallout for the Prime Minister and should parties across the aisle respond. Let's bring in the strategy session to dig in. Joining me now are Greg McCachran. He's advised polit politicians at all three levels of government and worked on the communications team for two national election campaigns. Greg leans liberal. Yaroslav Baran from Pendulum Group. He was the communications director for the Conservative Party and NDP national director. Anne McGrath is here Nice to see you all. Happy Friday. It's a big day today. Um, Yaroslav, I want to start with you um, because Pierre Poiliev says that Justin Trudeau's word, calling it a fringe minority, uh, was a provocation. It made it worse. So I want to ask you if the fact that many MPs from the Conservative Party supported uh, the, uh, the occupation, you know, over days and days, brought them coffee and, and, and all that, did that make them, embolden them, and make them want to stay maybe a little bit longer? Well, sure. Anytime a protester sees a, a welcome mat, sees a, a warm cup of coffee, it sends them a signal that they're welcome, that they should be there, and it shows them support. That's just a fact of life. Uh, speaking of this, uh, of, the, uh, of, of the Prime Minister's remarks today, I thought one of the most significant things that happened today, probably on par with the Rouleau Commission report, was the fact that Today, the, the Prime Minister apologized for having othered and smeared said he uh, legi said yeah, legitimate yeah. people with differences of opinion the way he had. I shouldn't have tarred them all with the same brush. I thought that was a classy move. I thought was, that, that was important to do because probably the vast majority of the energy behind the protests was people feeling frustrated, left out, voiceless, unheard. unheard. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought that was a classy move by the Prime Minister today, it was long overdue, and maybe, maybe it's a turning of the page. So, so, Greg, let me ask you, he did today, um, and, and, and I think that perhaps even conservatives uh, thought, thought it, but isn't it a bit late um, to, to, to say that because it was a provocation, a little bit? I, yeah, no, because it's not why they stayed here. Let's be realistic. They didn't come and stay because the Prime Minister used one word. If they did do that, then they are bigger snowflakes than what most people on the far right call people in the centre and left. I note that Rouleau, in his first volume, uses the word fringe three times himself. And I think what the Prime Minister was trying to say, unsuccessfully, and like Yarrow, I am glad that he apologized so perhaps we can move on. But there were people out here who were here for realistic reasons, pe people that I might not have had an argument with. And they got caught up with people who were using people's, the residents of Ottawa's bathroom, backyards as bathrooms. Um, so it's not about that word. You know, what we found out today was being angry is not justification to break the law. That's, it's as simple as that. And, and when I noticed the, you know, the Conservative MP, the Conservative leader trying to make this about Trudeau as the cause, well, no, the, the cause was a huge failure in policing. They should never have been out there in the first place. They should never have been allowed to stay. So the problem escalated to the point where it became up to the federal government to solve it, and they did. And one of the other things I thought the Prime Minister said today, I think we should note, is he paid tribute to the parliamentarians 30 years ago who wrote this act. The act has aged, and it needs to be updated. Perrin Beattie was the minister at the time. I noticed just as we were coming into the studio, uh, he's done some, some tweets on this, some comments. Finally, he's, he's talked about this. But again, I, I think, you know, ultimately, it was a tough test, and the justice says the federal government met it. And I'm wondering, I'm, I'm going to look to the future here. Uh, there are 56 recommendations. And again, I'm going to go and a hammer on the same point, but, but we don't have a single national intelligence coordinator for major events yet in Canada, uh, or we don't have better information and intelligence sharing between all levels of government and police forces. That was two of the recommendations. Um, how hard is your party going to press this government to implement things as obvious as this? Well, I mean, first of all, it was on, the, the lack of coordination was on display 
completely Absolutely. during that yeah. whole thing. I mean, we've talked before about what a failure it was at all levels of government that it even came to this. I will say that I think that Justice Rouleau and his commission has done a, an enormous service, uh, both in, 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 in giving us the warning uh, but also in pointing some uh, to, to some things that we need to actually take action on. And one of them is uh, to update the, the Emergencies Act. And I think that that's important. So I, I think that um, the Emergencies Act clearly was necessary uh, at, at, at the time, and that's what was concluded from this. But now we know that there are things that were not foreseen when the Act was, uh, was first uh, developed, and we have to make those changes. So what we will be doing is we will be making sure that that happens, and we will be making sure that we yeah. uh, put, the, put things in place so that we are able to deal with things like this. Yeah. I mean, the anger, the frustration, the despair that people feel is not going away. There are a lot of things to be concerned about, but we can't allow that that's often sometimes legitimate anger and, 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 and you know, frustration to develop into lawlessness, which is what was allowed to happen during that, uh, during that period of time. And we have to remember that during that period of time, the, the, the residents of Coutts, Windsor, and Ottawa were fearful, uh, were, were, were worried, were, were upset. Uh, I, I know that they felt uh, that they couldn't leave their apartments or their homes. They couldn't go to work. Businesses were shut down. It was not acceptable that things uh, descended to the level that they did. So I'm very happy that the, that the justice has pointed a way for us forward uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen again. So, you know, unfortunately, Yaroslav, the, these things happen and everybody goes, yeah, lessons learned, we're going to change, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. How much do you trust that there will be, and Anne is right, an update of a, a bill that, that passed in 88 mm -hmm. where the realities weren't the realities we're facing today. So, you know, I'm not going to ask you lessons learned, but how much do you trust that things will change and that we will be better prepared? I think it's less about whether this act aged like a fine wine or like a stinky cheese and more a question about federalism. We saw with healthcare last week, we saw with emergency preparedness this week, we have federalism issues. We have intergovernmental, the how do you play nice together issues and these probably need to be fixed. We've got a constitution that was written in the 1860s uh, and we're trying to figure this out now and we're struggling through it issue after issue. Maybe it's time for a bigger rethink on a whole bunch of issues. I don't have a lot of time, but lessons learned. I know it sounds didactic. Well, I mean, I think that uh, Yarrow is right. That, that, I mean, when he said it was a failure, that Rulo said it was a failure of federalism, that's, that's a pretty harsh indictment. And I think that we all know that we have an Ontario Premier who didn't feel like it was his responsibility to have anything to do with what was happening in, in, in a major city in his province. The last word to you. Um, um, there's a lot of talk from critics on the right that the media is biased. I know that there are reporters that went to work every day in this neighborhood and took huge amounts of abuse and still covered this story fairly and unbiased. And I think that's important to remember. When people criticize our shrinking media, I think the Canadian media did the best job that they could under tremendous circumstances. I, I cannot agree with you more. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, that's all the time we have. Greg, Yaroslav, and thanks for making the time. Have a great weekend.